What's up guys, Ryan here from Mudgunner. Today we are talking hammer fired versus striker fired for pistols and what the main differences are between them. So I have a few different handguns here and we're gonna be talking about that, but for the most part, just know that both guns are good. So anything I talk about today, I, I own both. I like them both, but we're just talking about my personal opinions of them. So we're, we're gonna start with striker fire because that is the more common of the two as of right now and I'd say probably the most popular. We have a Glock 19 here, hands down, probably the most popular handgun, at least in the US, probably in the world. You can take with that what you will. I know there's some Glock haters out there, but relatively speaking, everyone should know how to shoot a Glock 19. It is, again, the most common handgun out there. If you can shoot this, you can shoot any other handgun. So with that being said, it's a striker fired gun. So you have no external hammer. All the firing happens from the inside. So you have basically a firing pin that's cocked back. And when you pull the trigger, you're releasing it forward. So it's like shooting forward to ignite the primer and shoot off your round. Where on a hammer fired pistol, now they're all built slightly different, but on a hammer fired pistol, you have an external hammer and that slams down when you pull the trigger and that's what hits your firing pin setting off the round. So hammer fired versus striker fired. And then there are even differences in those. So with hammer fired, you have a few different things. You have single action, which is when it is cocked back. When you pull that trigger, that is in single action or you have double action when it's already down and you pull the trigger, that is double action because you are pulling through the entire action to fire it. And then you also have a couple others that I don't have. You basically have double action only or L there's, there's basically two. You have LEM, which is HK's version of it. It's where there's a hammer on the gun, but it does not stay cocked back. You cannot cock the hammer back. It is always in that double action trigger pull. Now the pros of LEM is it's much lighter than a standard double action. Because with this, this is a HK USP9, the single action is light, but then the double action is extremely heavy. Like, I don't even know how many pounds it takes to pull this back, but it's probably like over 10 pounds. It's pretty heavy. Now, that's double action. The HK LEM, which is the double action only, it is much lighter than this trigger pull. Um, or at least some of them are. There might be some heavy ones out there, but for the most part, if you buy a LEM, or double action only HK, they are lighter than the single double actions. And then if you buy the SIG version, which I don't own that either, but we have a SIG 226 here. There are uh, DAKs, which is their double action. I don't know what it stands for. I don't know what LEM stands for. I don't know what DAK stands for, um, but those are SIGs and uh, HK's versions of a double action only trigger pull. So HK calls theirs the LEM, that's double action only for them. SIG does the DAK, which is their double action only. So for the most part, uh, they're not as common anymore, people that know about them. I, I know they're out there and I've shot them. They're not terrible. Honestly, the uh, Langdon Tactical HK LEM trigger is pretty great. But aside from that, I don't have experience with great triggers. But yeah, so again, this is hammer fired. This would be single action. And then this one actually doesn't have a double action. It is single action only. So that's the thing. There are a little bit more variations in the hammer fired world than the striker fired because with this, again, when you when you cock your gun back, right? Like right now, let's say there was a magazine in there, it would be ready to shoot. All you're doing is pulling the trigger. Now the pros with striker fire is it's the same trigger pull every single time. It's never a different trigger pull. So every time that slide racks back and goes forward, it's the same trigger pull. So what I like about striker fire is it, it's the same trigger pull every single time. And then it doesn't have all these extremities on it. You don't have a hammer. Um, you don't have a big uh, decocker safety on there. I like how simple it is. I know it's kind of, um, I'm gonna be, say it politely, it's like nerve wracking for some people that aren't familiar with guns or used to guns enough to really trust a striker fire gun. So I do get it guys, like I'm a gun person, but I understand the beginner's fear of it. And I wanna tell you guys, I've never had a negative experience with a striker fire handgun as of yet. I am not saying I could never have one. I'm just saying as of yet, I have not had any safety concerns with a striker fire pistol. And I know there are bad ones out there. Um, and I'll be honest, like SIG had issues with their 320s, but that's also because they don't have a trigger safety. And I don't know internally how all the safeties work on all these guns, but um, with a lot of striker fire guns, you have a trigger safety on the trigger. So I don't know if the camera is gonna pick it up that well, but basically there's this little bar in the trigger and that works as a safety. So if I try to pull the trigger from up here, it will not go back. So theoretically, if it falls, and I've, I've dropped handguns before, um, I've knocked them off of tables, they've fallen off my bed, they've fallen off of counters. I have dropped handguns before that were chambered. And 
it's kind of crazy, but every time a handgun falls, it always falls like this. And I've had it fall where it was pointed at my stomach. It was really, that one was actually, it made me nervous. It was my Smith & Wesson shield right here. This whole thing got knocked off a counter and it literally landed, well, there's my magazine. It literally landed like that. And if it would have went off, it would have like shot me in the stomach. So not the greatest thing, but uh, did not go off because they're, they're built to be safe guys. So again, and the uh, Smith & Wesson shield has a safety in the trigger as well. But this has a little, little trigger bar safety that prevents the trigger from going back and releasing your striker or your firing pin. So I know that it seems nervous, but as you build up confidence in shooting it and carrying it, you'll trust it more. And I might go back and forth between the striker fire, the uh, hammer fired, but and yeah, that's kind of the thing between Glock and uh, a lot of other guns. So again, SIG does not have that in their uh, P320s, which is their striker fire gun. They don't have that trigger safety. So earlier generations, they were known to go off if dropped. And I know there's been tests, uh, like I've specifically heard this with the FNS, like the FN, um, FNS pistols, where certain departments or whatever were testing, like tapping them with a hammer just to see if they would be drop safe and they would go off. Now, I don't know what the requirements are for different types of testing. I assume every agency is gonna do it different, but I mean, I. I wouldn't take a hammer of any type to the back of my gun to try to get it to go off, but I understand the thought process, I guess, of them simulating a drop. Because again, if these fall, they always fall pretty much back end down because this is the heavier side. So I kind of understand the mindset behind it because I would assume, I've never seen this testing done before, I would assume they would chamber the gun, put it in some type of rest downrange so that if they hit it, um, obviously the round's going downrange. But um, yeah, I've never, looked into any of that testing before i just i've heard of that specifically with the fns pistol and it failed so glock seems to be the running champ for departments across at least our nation and i assume in other countries too i did go to greece last year and they were actually running hk usps which was cool i was it was very interesting to see i did not get a close-up um a lot of the police officers I, I didn't really talk to them but they don't all speak English. So I didn't want to say, hey, can I take a closer look at your pistol? But I went to Greece in November and they were rocking HK USPs, which was pretty cool. Um, but at least here in Arizona, I've, I know a lot of guys from different departments all across the state. And the reigning champ of what's used out here is Glock. There have been other um, models accepted and other guns that, uh, like SIG used to be a pretty mainstream one, but, um, Departments have kicked SIG out basically, and that kind of sucks because I have friends that like their SIGs for their carry guns, uh, specifically the 226, also 320s, but um, yeah, their department won't let them run them anymore. So that kind of sucks, If especially if they're very used to it and they have their most training and uh, any incidents they've ever used with that gun, like they have the most time on that gun. So forcing them to go to Glock, again, I think everyone should know how to shoot a Glock, but what I will also admit is if you shoot this gun better for duty, I'd rather have them carry the gun they're more proficient with, but I do think it's important they know how to use this. So that's just my thoughts on it. Um, yeah, I love Glock. It's not my go-to handgun right now. My Shadow Systems is. This is chambered, the Glock was not, but um, this is my go-to handgun, and this is the safe direction in case you're wondering. But this is the Shadow Systems MR918. It's basically an upgraded Glock. For the most part, you look at it, it looks like a Glock. It's a fancy gun, but um, that's my main go-to handgun. And I shoot it better than a Glock, but I still know how to shoot a Glock. And I always keep this one around. This is a stock Glock 19. Nothing's been done to it other than a light. And then it's got some grip tape on there. It is an MOS gun, but as of right now, I have no intentions of putting a red dot on there. I do actually want to get another 19 Gen 5 at some point because I got a Radian Ramjet kit, which is a barrel and compensator. And I want to see how I perform with just a stock Glock 19 versus that. I would assume I would shoot a little better. I'm just curious if it's worth spending that, you know, three, 400 bucks or however much they are to go for it. So I want to get another Glock 19 Gen 5 at some point just to do that test because I have that Radian Ramjet. It's just doing nothing. But um, yeah, I love my Glock 19. Now back to hammer fires. The reason why I am not a fan of carrying a hammer fire is just because you have all that extra on there. You have a hammer um, and I know how to use them. Like I have no issues using them. But what's nice about um, certain hammer fires is again, this is an HK USP. I'm right-handed. So I'm going to show you the guys this kind of left-handed, but with the hammer cocked back, you have a couple options on what you can do. So let's say the gun is chambered right now. You can push this up and that would be considered cocked and locked. So cocked is when the hammer's back 
and locked is when you have the safety on. So hopefully this helps out some of the beginners. If you guys already know this, sorry, but I know there's beginners that watch my channel too, and I recommend them to watching my videos in the store I work at. So yeah, this would be considered cocked and locked. You have a hammer cocked back and then your safety on. So now the gun cannot fire. Now, if I was carrying a hammer fire gun, this is how I'd want to carry it. So I would stick it in my holster like this. And then when I go to draw, I'm gonna turn this way. When I go to draw, I would push down with my thumb. Now it's on fire and then you'd be ready to fire. And that's how I would prefer to carry it. The other option is you would chamber your round and then you push this down to decock it. So now it's cocked, but it's decocked. So you have a round in the chamber, but the hammer is down. So that first trigger pull is gonna be double action. And you saw that double action is very heavy. So if I had to pull through this, I could do it and you'll see the gun's not gonna move too much, but the heavier the trigger pull, the more the gun potentially moves. Um, if I'm focusing on it, I can hold it pretty steady so it's not gonna move. But let's say you're a beginner, the heavier the trigger pull, the more you're probably gonna move your hands. So you might jerk that trigger. And I mean, even with striker fire guns like the Glock, I've shot and people have shot low into the left if they're right-handed. That's because you're anticipating that trigger to go off so you dip the gun. But if you have that heavy trigger pull, it's just gonna exaggerate that dip in my opinion. So. I prefer, if, I'm, if I were to carry a hammer fired gun, which I don't, I would prefer cocked and locked. Um, but yeah, that, the, the nice thing is you have that option of either or on a lot of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So you can do safety up, you can do safety up with the hammer back or decocked, and then you just have it on fire. I don't think there's any reason to have the safety on when it's decocked because that trigger pull is so heavy. There's nothing physically that can set that trigger off other than your finger. Um, I'm, I say that, but some idiot would probably make it happen. But yeah, I don't think you can negligently pull that trigger um, on accident, basically. So yeah, that's a single or double action gun. And then we're also gonna talk about single action only because I actually really like single action only hammer fired guns. And if you notice, most of my hammer fired guns are all pretty big because they're just range guns for me. I enjoy shooting them. Um, this one, in it's okay. I like the HK P30 or BP9 better. Uh, the USP9 is a vibe though, and we got the old school M6 light and laser on there. But this is probably for a, well, I can't even say it's my favorite. I have so many different handguns at this point. Um, this is a 226 Legion, and this is a single action only. Now, when I first got a 226 Legion by SIG, I had the single double action model. So kind of worked exactly like this. You had, or you didn't have a uh, safety, you had just a decocker. Um, but the whole point with the Legion is they had the nice trigger in there, the short reset trigger. The single action on the Legion was very nice, but the double action was horrendous. It was just as bad as this on like a thousand dollar pistol. So it's like, if I'm gonna spend that kind of money, I'd rather have the nicer trigger. So after owning that one for about six months, this one came into the store used and I asked my boss if I could just do a straight swap because price-wise they were about the same. Um, but the single double action Legion has a curved trigger and then it has the decocker. The single action only has a straight trigger and then the safety. And the safety on this is very nice. Like it's so easy to get to, but you'll notice the hammer's down. You cannot physically fire it because it's single action only. That means the, the hammer has to be back. And we're gonna talk about this because I think uh, I still see people do this. You don't let the hammer down on a single action only gun. One, it's not safe because I have been told by people that have done this that they have negligently discharged the gun because it slipped out of their hands. That's negligence, it's not an accident because you are in control of it. But now you basically have a paperweight if you do that. And I've seen plenty of videos where you may not have time, well one, it's hard to do with just one hand to like recock that back. It requires well, basically two hands. I don't think, um, I don't think you're saving yourself anything. Like, just carry it cocked and locked. That is what the safety's for. That trigger cannot go off with the safety on. So do not manually decock a single action only gun. It's unsafe and it might get you killed. So yeah, single action onlys are very nice because they give you the lightest trigger pull possible. And that's why I like this because you'll notice it's a flat trigger. When it hits that wall, it basically breaks at almost a 90 degree angle. So it's very flat. And I, even in rifles, I'm really starting to love flat triggers. I mean, I've loved them for years, but I like flat triggers more than I like curved triggers. Now, where the exception of that is, is 1911s. I mean, that's kind of curved. It's still mostly flat, 
but 9 to 11 trigger pulls are great. And honestly, I don't think you can really get a striker fired trigger pull to be as light as a single action only because there are lots of guns out there in kits that you can do to adjust these. Um, where striker fire, you can get them light. They still have a little bit more movement to deal with than a single action only gun. So I like single action only um, for a range gun. Like if I had just a range gun, this trigger pull is nicer than the Glock every single day of the week. But this gun for me is not something I'd want to carry. Um, also, I mainly carry appendix. So carrying something that has a hammer cocked back, um, if you bend over, sit down like I'm doing now, uh, that's probably going to dig in a little bit. So I think it'd be less comfortable. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be guns out there that I like in the future. Just right now, I prefer striker fire guns. And you'll notice I have a few striker fire guns here that are all my carry guns, just depending. I don't have too many carry guns. I mean, this is a lot, but I've got three carry handguns over the course of like eight years at this point, plus one oddball one, which technically is hammer fired. I have this LCP2 for when I go running. And even though it doesn't have an exposed hammer, this actually does have an internal hammer that's cocked back right now. And uh, when you pull the trigger, it lets the hammer forward. So this one's kind of like a in-between because it doesn't look like a striker fire gun, but in the back, it does actually have a hammer. Um, and the LCP1 had a double action trigger pull. The LCP2 has a single action trigger pull. So this was a big upgrade from the first gen LCP. Um, this is by Ruger. It's also chambered, so I'm not gonna mess with it. And it does have a trigger safety too. So it's hammer fired with the trigger safety, which is pretty cool. So yeah, hopefully that helps a little bit, guys. We'll also talk 1911 real fast, just because I forgot about this. Um, so 1911, they're basically all single action only. So the hammer has to be cocked back. I can't think off the top of my head of double action ones. Um, but there are oddball non 1911s that are for sure double action that look like 1911s. So with this, you still have the safety. Now, the other thing that the 1911 incorporated was a grip safety. So on top of this, the gun will not fire unless you have pressure on the grip. So proper grip and you'll notice. So hammer, the safety is off, which this one's one sided. So safety is off. If I try to pull this, it will not go off unless I put pressure right here that allows it to go off. And again, this is one of the lightest trigger pulls you can get. Maybe not this gun specifically, but the single action, especially in 1911s, there are some super light triggers in 1911s. And uh, again, I just really like them for range guns. It's not necessarily my go-to carry gun of choice. Um, if I had an open carry holster, it would be fine. I just, I don't want to conceal carry this. But yeah, just personal preference. Again, I like both trigger pulls for different reasons, striker fire or hammer fired. But my carry choice as of right now is hammer fired. But my carry choice right now would be a striker fired gun. So I hope this helps you guys. I know it's kind of a lot of information, but if you're new to it, just take it little by little. Um, again, if you can shoot a Glock, you can shoot damn near any pistol out there. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for my next video.